Coach Mike DeBose, welcome back to Tuscaloosa. I hope you're doing well, sir. Ryan, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, I, I appreciate you helping us pay respect to Sean Alexander, and maybe I'll just kind of uh, ask you, when you hear that name, what's the first thing you think of when you think about Sean Alexander? Class. Class. Just, just you know, great football player, but even a better man. Just the He's an amazing leader for us. Uh, he's an ambassador for the university wherever he goes, an ambassador for Christ and his family wherever he goes. He's just, a, you know, he's one of those guys that you, you see once ever so many years that just sort of jump out at you. And he, and he makes everything look easy. Very gifted, very talented, uh, but uh, very humble at the same time. Do you remember him getting recruited? And I don't know who was assigned to Florence, Kentucky, and Boone County High School. But do you remember him getting recruited and uh, getting offered to to come to Alabama? I, I was not a part of that process. I want to think Ivy Williams might have been the uh, recruiting coach. I'm not sure though. I, I want to think that Ivy had that area and been the running backs coach at that particular time. But again, I'm not sure. But do you remember uh, having to? to watch him do his thing in LSU? Because that's certainly the conversation that comes up quite often, and it did with Coach Stallings yesterday, too. Well, it, you know, it, it's, it's one of those games that looks like it's uh, over with, and uh, Sean just takes it over, and that's what great players do. Uh, you know, he, he did it uh, the same thing down uh, in uh, in Gainesville, the first uh, Florida game. You know, when uh, it takes that one over, it takes the LSU game over, and uh, – and that's what great players do. You know, he wants the football on every every play, and if he doesn't get it, he's disappointed that, uh, because he thinks he's going to score on every play. Every time he touches a football, and there's a good possibility that he wouldn't. You know, the one thing he always said, though, that, that always tickled me, and my wife always wanted him to throw a halfback pass, and he'd always tell Polly, runners run and throwers throw. He, he was a runner. No reason. If he gets it in his hands, there's no reason to give it up. I got gotcha. you. We are talking with Coach Mike DeBose. I want to go back to that 1999 team because I think about Miguel Merritt. I think about Cornelius Griffin. I think about Jason McCadley. Uh, I, I think about just – I mean, there was, there was some great team – I may have, may have years may have got me with Jason McCadley. Maybe that was a couple of years later. But uh, uh, Chris Samuels, the team chemistry uh, of that team. What made that team so tight, Coach? Uh, the senior, the senior group of uh, players, Sean and then Chris, like you mentioned, and Cornelius, and and those guys, uh, the senior group would just not allow that football team to not be anything but very, very good. Uh, you know, with a lot of distractions going on in in the season, but they just stayed focused. But and because of that leadership, and especially I believe because of uh, Cornelius and, and Chris, when you you know, anytime you got somebody like Sean, uh, you know, that's great. But when you got big guys that are leaders, uh, you know, oftentimes they're not. If you big guys are important, but sometimes they're not the, the best of leaders. But when you've got leaders like Chris Samuels and, uh, and Cornelius Griffin, uh, you know, you've got something special. And I think that was the difference in our football team. I think they just willed us to win. Coach, um, we, 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 first time I think I've visited with you in a, in a long time, and I, I greatly appreciate the conversation. I know this is going to sound like a, a generic question, but we have a chance to talk with Coach Stallings every single week. He means so much to us in Tuscaloosa. What does Coach Stallings mean to you? Oh, <laughs> uh, gosh. You know, it's a, it's a hard question to answer because, it's, you know, the, I, I guess the, the more than I'm away from Coach and, uh, you know, the more – important he becomes to me uh you know sometimes when you're close and you're coaching with somebody you you know you think you've got all the answers and don't really need help from anybody else you know and i've told people this many many times uh you know the biggest mistake that i made is after being named head coach up there i should have went to, to paris texas and spent three or four weeks with him and just tried to, to glean from him as much as i could but uh you know it's, thought i had all the answers and didn't do that but uh, you know, I've called him many, many times. He's always been willing to help. Uh, again, it's people's skills are just tremendous. Uh, to do anything for you. Loves people. Loves to help. And uh, just a great coach, a great man, and uh, somebody I admire tremendously. Think about him every day. Well, certainly, uh, we were we were a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it's been about a month ago. We were we were sitting here, and uh, we we hear the story of the accident uh, with you. 
And uh, Coach Stallings was on, and he just broke the news here and said, he's okay, he's okay. He told us that he was that he said he had talked with you. He said, he's okay. He said it was just a minor accident. So, uh, uh, But we were we were thinking about you that day. Are you recovering okay? I'm doing great. It, it meant an awful lot when Coach Bates called me. And, uh, you know, the first thing he said, you know, after I explained to him what happened, he said, well, happens, no mistakes happen. Accidents happen sometimes. So, you know, and, uh, again, I really did appreciate his call. I think he had uh, – Talked with Jeff Foshi, or Jeff Foshi had called him, and Jeff, uh, former linebacker for us, and mentioned it to him. And as soon as they hung up, he called, and it meant an awful lot to me. I was actually in the hospital in Dauphin at that particular time. Let me ask you when you, when you look, and we love talking about the legacy of Alabama football. Uh, when you talk about Coach Paul Bear Bryant, I mean, we could spend hours and days and weeks and years talking about Coach Paul Bear Bryant. Uh, how often do you catch yourself doing things? That reminds you of Coach Paul Bear Bryant. Uh, just about every day. Okay. You know, it's a, same way with uh, with Coach Stallings. They're very similar in so many ways, and each one tried to teach you so much about life through the game of football. And I, and I guess that's the reason you you reflect back on the things that Coach used to say, and Coach Stallings both would say uh, that uh, it's just uh, take you through many many uh, circumstances and situations. I'll never forget. Uh, you know, my dream was after I got through playing was to coach for him, and he, he called one day and uh, I answered the phone. He said, uh, "Coach, and Mike," and said, "They got a job for you." He said, "Coach, I want it." And just realized I'd just taken a job somewhere else, and, and I told him, "Look, Coach, I've got a small problem, not a big problem, but a small problem, and uh, I've just taken a job down in Southern Mississippi, but I uh, haven't signed the contract. I can get out of it." And there was a silence on the other end, and he said, "Mike, your word ought to be your bond." And I tried to explain to him for about 30 minutes why well, in this situation that shouldn't be. But he said, well, you think about it and you pray about it and you call me back. And I talked to my dad, and about 30 minutes later I called him back, and I said, Coach, you're right. And I gave him a word I need to stick with it, and I did. But but that was the type of man he was. You know, he just, he, it was always about life lessons with him. We're talking with Coach Mike DeBose right here, and, and certainly – when you look back at that 1973 national championship team, what stands out to you about that championship team? Uh, again, the chemistry of that football team was really good. Uh, you know, but uh, I guess the, the thing that I reflect back to when I think about that group of guys is how hard everybody worked, but the fact that we, you know, we won the UPI national championship, we ended up uh, losing to Notre Dame in a game that we felt like we should have won. Notre Dame was a, was a great football team, the class football team. It was one of those we felt like we should have won and, and didn't win, you know, made some mistakes that uh, let, them out, let them out of some crucial situations there. But, uh, uh, you know, that, that part of it, uh, I guess sometimes it's the ones you didn't win that you remember the most and reflect back on the most often. But, uh, the other thing about that is the class of Notre Dame and uh, and how well prepared, how well coached those, those players were. Coach, you were also part of a transition as a player, even though you were a defensive lineman on the other side of the football. We watched something that was very good to uh, the University of Alabama, and that was the wishbone uh, that made that transition. What was that like to see Coach Bryant transitioning and, and moving out of the pro set to uh, the wishbone in the early 70s? You know, I wasn't a part of it. Uh, you know, when the my freshman year was seventy one, and freshmen couldn't play at that particular time. So, with, when we get there, they had already made the change from uh, the pro style offense to the wishbone, and been practicing about a week when we got there. And, uh, uh, so, I did, you know, wasn't a part of the other aspect of it. That's all that we knew. The thing that I remembered the most as a defensive player, and, and loved the most about the wishbone, is you look at the defensive reel, and it, you know, we wouldn't play. 40, 50 snaps, it seemed like. And they were playing 70 or 80 snaps back in those days. That was a lot. And they just dominated the, the football game by the time we're controlling the football. And uh, and everybody had to be physically tough to play in that. And, and I remember, as so a middle linebacker, if we went to the 3 4, the middle linebacker dropped down on the nose. And we had Jim Cross and Buddy Brown and uh, John Hannon. And they'd come off the football. And Bill Oliver was about 20 yards back behind the secondary. All I remember is they hit me, and I, you know, when I look back and I see Brother Oliver standing there, and then all of a sudden they just sort of set me down. Well, now, now was, what, uh, what was it like going up against those Hannahs? Those guys were pretty tough, huh? <laughs> well, they all were. All all that group of guys was tough back in in, in those days. But uh, Buddy Brown and uh, 
John had a Jim Crow for all All-American players at that particular time. And, uh, you know, if you could just make it through Wednesday's practice, uh, you know, Coach Brown was going to go one on one to twos on twos a lot, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And you could just get through practice, and the game become pretty easy. It was, it was you go and get some great, great players, and uh, at the same time, physically and mentally tough guys. Coach, I, I want to ask you a question from a coaching perspective. You know what it takes to win at a high level uh, as a as a assistant coach, uh, as a head coach, as a former player. Can you help us understand from a coaching perspective what Coach Saban has been able to accomplish? <laughs> I, I wish I could. I really wish I could, but I can't. Uh, you know, I was thinking uh, when you asked me uh, to come on and – on a show with this, you know, and the one thing that uh, that I always remember coaches saying that they'd always say that it looked like Sean made everything easy. It didn't look like he was going for speed all the time. The reason was he was just he was so talented that you know when everything was so smooth, he was nobody was catching him. But he didn't look like he was running full speed a lot of the times. And and coach Coach Saban has sort of done that. You know, he's made this thing look pretty easy. But I promise you, it's not what he is. What he's accomplished is very, very, very difficult to do. And and he's made it look easy. And, uh, it's, uh, and I'll I, I be honest with you, I'm sort of blown away by it. It's amazing to me. What do you think about this quarterback in Tuscaloosa? He's pretty good, Coach. Well, he's great. He's a great quarterback. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody at that age that could see the field as well as he sees the field. And uh, you know, But they've got other great quarterbacks. They're, they're just a very talented football team. And I think that's one of the greatest accomplishments, in my opinion, of Coach Saban is to be able to recruit so much great talent and yet keep them happy and get them to play as a team. Because a lot of times, uh, you know, those types of guys become individualists and they, you know, they're worried about their NFL career and they don't play within, within the team concept all the time. But he's done a great job of getting them all and coming together and playing as a team and, uh, and again, making it look real easy. Coach, you, you, you certainly had some great defensive linemen as a position group. Co- uh, Copeland and Curry, the book ends. Uh, how would you design a game plan to maybe slow him down? What what would you try to slow him down? Maybe that'd be the better question. Well, again, you got to me, I think the biggest thing you got to do, and to, you know, one of the things I don't see defensively as much as you used to, and uh, Bill Oliver was a master of it, and that's you got to change the coverage yourself. You got to you got to show him something and be doing something else. I think the offense, they are so good. If they know where the defense is going to be after the snap of the football, then it's just pitch and catch a lot of times. And uh, I think you've got to, you've got to disguise your coverages. As Coach Stolen used to always say, disguise your intentions and show them one thing and then do something else and, and keep mixing up. And then it becomes a chess game. You know, you're going to move right sometimes, you're going to move wrong. But the, Seems like oftentimes now the offenses are moving right all the time. Coach Mike DeBose, we, we certainly got you on to talk about Sean Alexander, but let me ask you about Dabo. Uh, you, you've watched this young man grow up to be one of the greats in, in our business of college football. How much of a sense of pride that when you see Dabo and the success that he's had there in Cl- at Clemson, South Carolina, that, that you kind of bring a big smile. It's a great story from – the work ethic that he had here as a player, uh, work for you as an assistant coach, work for Coach Stallings. But when you see Dabo having the success, I mean, it has to bring a smile to your face. Well, you knew that he would. Uh, you know, as a young player, as a, as a walk-on player, the work ethic and earned a scholarship. Uh, as a young coach, uh, hardest working coach I had on my staff, uh, you know, the best recruiter I had on my staff. You, you just know that he's going to be successful in whether it's in business or whether it's in football, whatever Dabo does, he's going to be good at it. He'll be successful, and he's done a great job at Clemson. And uh, you know, the two teams that look like it's uh, probably the you know the most evenly matched would be Alabama and Clemson right now. Hey, it'd be a lot of fun to watch. I wouldn't mind seeing that one again. I mean, the I first wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Either. Coach, uh, thank you again for helping us pay tribute to Sean Alexander. We greatly appreciate you helping us connect the dots and. Uh, helping us understand him as a player. Uh, he was an awesome ambassador, as you said, of the University of Alabama, and we'll echo that here. I appreciate the conversation, Man, I'm Coach. I'm very, very, very excited for Sean and his family to the university and roll tight.